Good morning viewers. Welcome to KU TV. This is Elim Live where we, are, we will be taking you throughout. We will engage you all over this pandemic in all subjects from Monday to Friday. So welcome today I want to take you on a subject called science. My name is teacher Edwin Yose. I'm a teacher by profession and I teach at a school called Katsam School which is in Umoja Inako. So welcome so that I can tell you the tips that they used to set KCP and the how to handle questions concerning the topic that I want to teach you right now. So as I've said earlier, the lesson today is science and the science lesson today I want to talk about a topic known as water. Water we learned mostly from the previous classes. We have learned water in class one, we learned about water. In class two, we learned about water. In class three, up all the way up to class eight. So I want to take you through many places through this lesson and I hope you will find how they said the examiners use this 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 topic called this topic called water to set in various areas. For example, last year in KCP, they set four questions. Was on water. Question number 25 again was on water. Question 26 and 27. So they set at most five questions in every KCP. So there are some things that they use. There are some tricks that examiners use when they are setting this topic or any science lesson. For example, we have got the six cognitive or the levels of domain they use to, uh, to test the learners. The first one is what we call, let me write something a, a little. The first one is what we call the knowledge. They test the learners about knowledge. Knowledge entails those questions that are of low ability. Those questions that learners can get them very easily. A knowledge question, they set almost 17 questions. The next th thing that the examiner looks at or sets and want to test you is what we call comprehensive questions. Comprehensive questions, or this is the scale, or to comprehend. There are some questions that are in sentence form. And this one is sets almost eight questions. The examiner, I'll give you some of the examples. The other thing, the skill that the examiners look at is what we call application questions. The application questions, you apply what you have learned. And these application questions are mostly the ones that they ask on this topic called water. Because application questions entail those questions that ask uses, they ask functions, they ask purpose, and they ask importance. So you'll find uses of water is an application. Function is the same as use. The purpose of using this water is here. So importance of water, it is here. The other thing that the examiner looks at when he's testing you is what we call analysis questions. We have got something called analysis. And then the other thing also that they look at is synthesis question. Synthesis question comprise those questions that are entailed Roman numbers. You will you will find mostly a question like for class 8, soft water and hard water. Mostly it has got Roman numbers. And then we have got the last skill that the examiner looks at is what we call evaluation. And these ones they use to differentiate or to determine which learner is very keen when answering question and which learner, may, if you make a slight mistake, you can fail that question. So comprehensive questions, I said there are eight in number. Application questions, they set eight again in number. Analysis question, the examiner test seven questions in number. And then synthesis question, the examiner looks test for you, test around five questions there. And then evaluation, this one comprises of those questions that are very hard, difficult. You need to reason so that you can answer them. So you'll find the examiner places there only four questions. These questions will, de will determine if you'll get the whole marks in science 
or if you fail if you fail two or three it can make a big difference between the top student and the one that is second or third or any number in KCPE so today i want to talk about water as we know water is essential for us every living thing living thing in the environment comprises of plants and animals so water is very important for both plants for both animals and when you talk about animals even a housefly is an animal a bee is an animal everything there so this water we need it if you look at the major components of environment that we learned in class seven the major components of environment that we learned in class seven we have got the plants plants is there we have got the animals plants and animals make the living things we have got the soil we have got the air and then you have got water you will find that under these five major components of environment we still have got water there which is a major component and it is the one that covers the earth's largest surface so this water is very essential and we need to control it in grade one or class one we learned about the sources of water in class two we learned about something called ways of making safe in water safe for drinking in standard three we learned about ways of transporting water in class four again we learned about uses of water and they shall take you through because all these areas come in exam in class five water where they muted it a little bit but in class six it appeared we learned about waterborne diseases in standard six in standard seven we learned about water pollution and the ways of conserving water and then lastly in class eight we learned about hard water and soft water so in kcp these four questions one they test from class four downwards from class four to grade one either they bring uses of water or ways of making water safe for drinking and the last year it was there in class six it has never missed in the any exam that they have tested since 2010 up to 2019 there's no single day in kcpe a question on waterborne diseases has lacked there so you'll find that this is a topic that you need to be very keen in standard seven again water pollution mostly it is not tested but ways of conserving water because we need this water so they even test learners to know if you know some of the ways that you can use to conserve water so you'll find it it is very very useful so that you can conserve water that's why it is tested daily ways of using water sparingly reusing recycling and then in class eight the two types of water in science we can use the word types of water there's no problem so we have two types of water in class eight and we shall go through it and that one again it is always tested last year it was there last year but when it was there 2016 they tested about it so you'll find that you need to revise in this topic thoroughly that's why today i will not rush through class four class one up to class eight the whole of it i'll divide it into two parts so that you can understand it very well so today i want to begin with the place called sources of water the one that we learned in class one the main sources of water that we learned first of all what is a source the source of water a source of water is where we obtain or get water from the place where you go and fetch it where you obtain it that's what we call a source so the main sources of water one we have got rain two we have got rivers three we have lakes four we have oceans five springs springs are mostly found in rural areas where they just go and fetch there it is a natural one and then you have got streams we have got dams dam is a source of water there is something here called a borehole it is still a source of water or they did not add it there and then there's something that you are learned you learned in class one the main source of water is rain and we know rain comes from god that's why it is the main source Although we learn about condensation of clouds and then it falls, it's true. Okay, tap. There's something called tap. 
Many examiners use, use it as a distractor. Tap is not a source of water. We cannot fetch water, we cannot store water in a tap. We cannot obtain it from there because this tap is only used to do what? Water is pumped from rivers or dam or oceans or lakes and then you just go there, you open the tap and close it after using it. So tap is not a source of water. Back again in class one, there was something they taught us about characteristic of pure water. These characteristics Mostly, it went numb. In most subjects, you'll find that in most areas, these characteristics of pure water is very different from characteristics of soft water and hard water. So I want the class 8 examiners and all who have tuned in, be very keen there. I have used the word pure water at the beginning. We shall come again. I shall come again and I'll take you to, through a place about the characteristics of soft water and hard water so don't confuse the two so we have got pure water that we learned about in class one so this pure water has got some characteristics and these characteristics there is a book called mental science the unit for water number one they 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 mention something like that which one of the following is a characteristics of pure water so let us look at these characteristics the first characteristic of pure water is it is colorless. We know water has no color. The second one, it is odorless. Water has no smell. The other name for odorless, it has no smell. The third characteristic of water, it is tasteless. Water is tasteless. You, it does not have a taste. That one is in real sense. You cannot have, it does not have a taste. If you drink water, and then you realize that it has got a smell like for chlorine. It has got a smell, a funny smell like that. That one is not pure water. Pure water, it, in its nature, the way God created it, when you obtain it from the source, it does not have any taste. And then the other characteristic of water, it is free from bacteria and pathogens. It does not have any bacteria at all. It does not have anything called pathogen at all. This pure water, again, the last char characteristic is that it is free from dissolved salts. It does not have any dissolved salts. And this one, I want you to mark very well the candidates because you shall learn about something called soft water again on this topic called water. Soft water, we know. It has got little or no dissolved salts. But pure water here, you will find that it is free from dissolved salts. So I think you know now the difference between pure water and soft water. So pure water, it was for class one. It is class one content. And mostly, we think that it is class eight or the examiners are lifting it from somewhere. It is just direct there in the syllabus. So let us be very keen. And let us read. And if you want to pass science, we must learn to revise from grade one up to class eight work. In standard three, I skipped something, but I'll come back to it. In standard three, we learned about ways of transporting water. You can transport water from one place to another. The first way you can transport water is by using cans. You can use a can. When I talk about cans, we have different types of cans. We have a jerry can. That one is the main one that we use. We have got another way of transporting water is by using animals. When I mention about these animals, we have different animals that can transport water. At rural areas, they can use oxen. Oxen can be used to plow. They can also be used to transport water. We have got another animal called donkey or donkey. Donkeys, when they are placed on a handcart or even if they are not there, the handcart is not available, they can transport water. And then the other way of transporting water we learned in class three is by using pipes. Pipes is mainly used in what we call urban centers or in towns. Use of pipes 
is the one that pipes can transport water over a longer distance. Just imagine water is tapped from the Kaini Dam. It is transported all over Nairobi County and everybody can assess it through a tap. So that's why the best way of transporting water in urban centers is by use of pipe. The best way of transporting water in rural area is by use of animals. When you talk about animal, even human beings are animals. So we are an animal and we are a living thing. So we have got another way of transporting water using tankers. Candidates, can you mark the word tankers? The word tankers is different from the word tank. A tank mostly is found when it is a way of harvesting water. When we harvest water, we store it in a tank. This one, the, it can be a sky plast, or it can be even a cement. It can be cemented somewhere, and then you store water there. So you'll find that a water tanker is different from a tank. If it is a tank, and then they add ER, water tanker. This is a special vehicle, and it is a lorry that transports water. And mostly we find it in urban areas, where you find that there's a lorry, Mostly they are painted bluish, and then they have written there clean water. So a water tanker is a vehicle, or it is a lorry that transports water from one place to another. And then we have got another way of transporting water known as using handcarts. We use handcarts, mikokoteni, popularly known as like that one, to transport water. Okay? Let us continue. I, I, written, I have written a note there. A water tanker is a lorry that carries water in a big tank. The second point to note, if you're a candidate or any learner, the best method used to transport water in towns, the other name for towns is urban centers or urban areas. It is by use of pipes. And I've said the best method, again, used to transport water in rural areas it is by use of animals. Remember, people carry water on their heads. We can carry them using our hands. Some communities, they carry on their backs. So animals, or you can even use these animals like donkey and oxen. So use of animals is the best in rural area. In class two, we learned about ways of making water safe for drinking. There are two main ways of making water safe for drinking. One is by filtering. When you are filtering water, we use a clean white cloth. And then you have got a container. And then you need dirty water. Those are the three major materials that we use. When you are doing what? When you are making water, you are filtering water. Filtering helps to remove dirt. Because... When you filter, there will be water that will enter through, will go through, will pass through that clean piece of cloth. And that water, we call it filtrate. The dirt that is in that water will remain on the piece of cloth. That one we call it the residue. So filtering, it helps only to remove dirt. Filtering does not make water safe for drinking. So filtered water is not safe for drinking. The second way of making water safe for drinking is by boiling. Boiling is the best method of doing what? Making water safe for drinking. Why? Because it helps in killing germs. Remember, germs cannot survive at a certain temperature. So when you boil this water, the boiling point of water is always 100 degrees Celsius. So when it reaches there, all germs, I believe they will die. So you'll find that boiling is the best one. You can boil and then you filter because there's some of the dirt that will remain floating on water. When you shall reach on class 8 topic, we shall know what is the name of that dirt that is found in that water. Okay, let us continue. We learned again in class 3 ways of storing, apart from learning about ways of transporting water, we also learned about ways of storing water. We can store water in pots. We can store water in tanks. We can store water in dams. We can store water in drums. 
we can store water in buckets. We can store water in jerry cans. There is a key thing I want to underline there. Ways of storing water. Number two, I said in tanks. Water can be stored in tanks. But we cannot store water in a tanker. So a water tanker is used to transport water. But tanks are used to do what? To store water. So if it has got an ER, that one is for transporting. If it is just a tank, that one is for storing water. And then, okay, I've said in jerrycans, then buckets. Correct. So these are the main ways that we use to store water. There's something that I wrote there, a point to note. I said, a dam. Dam is a source of water. Under the sources, I mentioned a dam because we can obtain water from a dam. And the main example, if you are living in Nairobi, this Ndakaini Dam. This is the place where we obtain this water that we use for domestic purpose. And then a dam also is used to store large amount of water. Because it is a reservoir. So the second note I said, a dam is also known as a reservoir. A dam, some books they say, a dam is a reservoir that is built across the river. So where the water is passing, you can build it or obstruct it. So it can collect itself there, and then it can be in large amount. And then that water you can use it to supply to other areas. So you'll find a dam is the main method that is used to, trans to do it, to store water in large quantity or in large amount. In highly populated areas such as towns, water is stored in dams or reservoirs. In Nakuru, we had about a dam that collapsed. It was used to store water. In Nairobi, I've used an example about Ndakaini Dam, and those are the major towns. In Mombasa, we, uh, mostly they use water from the lake, but in some places that you don't have a lake, like Nairobi don't have something like, like Nairobi. There's nothing like that. We just have Nairobi River. So that water or some water from other sources, if it is not polluted, they can direct it to the dam, they can collect it, and then they can supply it to other people so that they can use it. So in urban centers or town, water is stored in dams because dams are used to store large quantity of water. Now I'm going back to class four. We have gone, we have gone through class one work, class two work, class three work. Now I am in class four work. In standard four, we learned about the uses of water. And at the back of our mind, we must, we must not forget about the sources of water. We should not forget about ways of making water safe for drinking. We should not forget about ways of transporting water. We should not also forget about ways of storing this water. So in this class four, now they came after storing it or after obtaining it from a source or after getting it or after tapping it, how can you use it? So in standard four now, they take you through how you can use water in different places. So they they divided into around five basic places. So there are five basic uses of water. Namely, the first one is domestic uses. Domestic uses is use of water at home. How we use water at home. The other one is uses of water in the farm. Farm uses of water. That is the second category. The third category is industrial use of water. How industries use water. The fourth category, we have got uses of water for recreation, recreational uses. And then the last one, we have got for transportation purposes. Water, again, can use for transporting, transportation. We have got ways of transporting water, but you have got uses of water. It can be used to transport. Yes, you can transport it from place to place using jerry can. We can use a water tanker. We can use a pipe. We can use anything that we have mentioned there. 
but also water can be used to transport some things or goods. We shall learn which things use, and mostly you will find that it is in sea, lakes, and oceans that water is used to transport some items or some goods. So in standard four, I want to begin by the first one, which is domestic uses of water. Uses of water at home. At home when you are there, how do you use this water? One, we use water for cooking food. We know food is the basic need. Every day, you must go and cook food or prepare some food. And before you prepare, even you'll do what? You will need this water even to wash your utensils. That's why you'll find washing utensils there. Drinking, we drink water. And right now, it's advisable to drink a lot of water because of the pandemic. Three, laundry. We use water to wash our clothes. Washing clothes is also known as laundry. I've used this word laundry because many learners there again when you come to class eight. We shall learn about this use of water. Which type of water is best for laundry? We shall learn which one is it. So that right now, let us focus on grade four or class four work. So laundry or washing clothes. So the other name for laundry is washing cloth. So if an examiner asks you, which water is best for laundry? In short, he is telling you which one is the best way or which type of water is used for washing clothes. So it is a synonym for laundry, washing clothes. Water again is used for cleaning floor. Cleaning the floor is popularly known as mopping. We mop using water. And then we have got cleaning toilets. Remember, in standard two, where we are told that a water closet is also known as toilet. When you want to use a disinfectant to clean a toilet or a water closet, you must add their water. If you want to use ash to clean a latrine, you must also use water. Ash removes that germs and the smell, but water again washes, washes it away. So you'll find that you will need this water again to wash these toilets and latrines. And then number seven, I said we use water for washing our bodies. And remember learners, right now I believe in Nairobi it is too cold, and I believe people have not absconded bathing I believe everybody now is bathing because bathing is good for your health. It will make you to be very, very healthy. So we use water to wash our bodies or use it for bathing. So those are the main uses of water at home. We have got many, many uses at home. In short, this is how we use water in the house. When the examiner test asks you which one of the following is a use of water at home, in short, he wants you to elaborate how you use water inside your house, at, at your home side. Some people, they'll say washing cars. We shall find washing cars is somewhere else because cars cannot be found in the house. And it was tested last year. The other use of water in standard four, we learned about uses of water in the farm. In the farm, or in sense, you can even use the word in the shamba. A farm is where we know we grow crop, crops. And when you grow crops, there are some things also we need. We need, we need this water to do some activities. So water in the farm can be used for washing farm tools. Farm tools are also known as farm implements. Farm tools like a wheelbarrow. When you have used a wheelbarrow, you need to wash it. When you have used a jembe, we need to wash it before storing. When you have used a panga, you need to even to wash it. If you have done, you have cut something like napier grass, and maybe it was a rainy season, you need to clean it. So water is used to clean farm implements. The other use of water is for irrigation. Irrigation is mainly done during dry season. Watering of plants is the other name for irrigation. And irrigation mostly is done during dry season. Those who live, reside at Nakuru area, I believe you have seen Lord De La Mea farm, they mainly practice this irrigation and they use what we call sprinkler irrigation. And we shall learn that sprinkler irrigation in grade class seven 
it is not a way of conserving water. We shall learn the best way of irrigating our crops. And then we have got another use of water in the farm, which is rearing fish in fish pond. Fish ponds are found at our home. In grade one, I believe they told us a fish is a domestic animal. A fish is also a wild animal. So it can be grouped as both domestic and wild. So because it can be found in a fish pond and also a lake. A lake is not found in our homes. That's why it is grouped as a wild animal. Fish are found in seas. That's why we group it as a wild animal. So fish is both domestic and wild animal. That's why we find them in fish ponds. The other use of water is mixing chemicals. And I want you to mark this word mixing chemicals because we shall meet it somewhere else. In the farm, the chemicals that we use, we use different chemicals. I just mentioned a few. We have got herbicides. These are chemicals used to kill weeds. We are or to control weeds. We have got pesticides. These are chemicals that are used to control pests. We have got acaricides. These are chemicals that are used to control parasites. And when we talk about parasites, we have external parasites like ticks. We have got another chemical known as nematocide. Nematocide is a chemical that is used to kill worms. We have got fungicide. This one is the one that is used to kill fungi, fungicide. It is used to control what we call fungi. We have got many, many chemicals, bactericide, used to control what? Bacteria. But most we are looking at these ones that we can mix because pests are found on the crops. Acaricides are found on animals. Herbicides are found, herbicides, they can be used to control weeds because weeds are found in the farm. Nematocide worms, the animals can have worms. Fungicides, fungi. A fungi, we know it is a harmful plant. So you, you can find that. We, these uses of water, we have got something called mixing chemical. And this mixing chemical, we shall also find it somewhere else. So in the farm, it is there. We shall see that there's a place again, we can use water to mix chemical. And that will be in industry. The other use of water is watering animals. Animals like cow, goats, sheep, donkey, they need water to drink after feeding. Even us, as we feed, we are supposed to take water. That's why in grade 5, class 5, I mean, it is still class 5, they talked about importance of water in a diet. So it is used... It helps in digestion, digestion of food. You will find that this water again. Animals also need it. So in the farm, we use this water for watering animals. Okay. So that is all about uses of water in the farm. And then we have got the last one known as dipping. Dipping, obvious, is what we call a cattle dip. It is a way of controlling external parasites like ticks, mites, flea. So we dip animals. And a cattle dip, it has got water. And this water is mixed with, when you mix water with a caricide, it makes something that we call a plunge. Plunge is a mixture of water and a caricide. That's why you find that I place there dipping as use of water because of cattle dip. So animals, when they have these parasites, the external parasites, remember dipping is only used to control external parasites only. Internal parasites is deworming. So this one you are focusing on a caricide only. Back to industrial uses of water. Industrial uses of water. Industries are also known as factories or factories. The factories, we know they are manufacturing center. We have got manufacturing industries. We have got processing industries. We have got assembling industries. We have got different types of industries. And these industries, they use machines. So the machines, they run. And one of the condition or requirement for an industry to exist, it must be near a water source. 
So most you will find that most industries are built near rivers. Industrial area in Nairobi, it is near a certain river. If you go to Eldoret, when you find this Kennet, ripe life for matchsticks, matchboxes, they are found across near a river, a certain river. When you go to a certain place, like the Webuya Pan Pepper industry, it was built near River Nzoya. So you'll find that for a factory to exist, it must be closer to a source of water. And we looked at the sources of water, and they mentioned river as one of the source. So you'll find that this water is very essential in industries. One, it is used in mixing chemicals. Earlier back, under uses of water in the farm, I said water is used for mixing chemicals, and I underline the word mixing chemical. When I go back to the industrial use of water, I begin again with the same same one, mixing chemical. So you'll find mixing chemical is both a use of water in the farm and also in industry. Remember, for example, let me just use a good example in schools. The schools have got different sweaters or pullovers. You'll find a certain school has got a blue pullover. We have got a certain school, a maroon one, another one, a red one, another one, green one. So you'll find, and we know that a nylon, or this thing called cotton, a cotton wool, it is always white in color. And this cotton wool is done that is used to make threads. These threads, they are whitish. And if they want to convert it into green, there is a machine, a special machine, that dips it. They use the machine to dip that wool into a dye. Dye is of different colors. So if they want color green, they dip in a dye that is greenish. If they want color black, they dip in a dye that is blackish. So you'll find that now they come and they do what? They sew everything so that you can get the color that you want, you desire, according to the school. So in industries, water is used for mixing chemicals. If you go to bottling industry, like Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola bottles or Equator bottles at Kisumu, you will find that water is used in making products like soda. Soda is a mixture of water. They use some chemicals there. And then they come up with this, a soft drink, known as what? A soda. And we enjoy drinking it. And we'll find that three quarters of it, or even four quarters, four over four, one whole is water. And then they just mix that with food colors and chemicals. So you'll find one of the use of water there is making products like soda. Water, these machines are running. And we can even look at a vehicle. When a vehicle has traveled for a longer distance, the engine heats up. Even the machines in industries, when they run for a long period of time, the engine heats up because of friction. And because of this friction, it produces heat. So we use this water to cool machines in industries. Water in industries, again, is used for cleaning machines and equipments. And I believe you are told, simple machines, machines are also known as tools. Simple machines are also called simple tools. So we use this machine, we use this water to clean these machines after they have done something like processing. Like if you go to tea company in Kericho, you will find that after they have processed tea, they have now they, it has reached the place of drying. Obviously, there's some of this that, that will be left on the machine. So they'll need water to clean all those things before they close their business for the day, in the course of the day. Another use of water we learned about in class four is making pulp. Making pulp. Pulp is made in a paper industry. You can see pulp begins the letter P. Paper industry begins the letter P. So pulp is used in making, water is used in making pulp in this what we call paper industry. Unfortunately, pan paper was closed, but I believe it will be revived and many candidates can visit there and see how water is used to make pulp. The other thing about use of water is making fountains. And this one is where many candidates make wrong and where many examiners know it brings a lot of challenge to learners. 
making fountain. A fountain creates a beautiful scenery. When you visit some places like Two River Mall in Nairobi, you'll find that there's some water. We have got even dancing fountains, water dances. They make some different pictures and it can dance. They use water to create those things so that it can dance. And I usually tell my candidates or my learners, you can use an example like a fountain pen. A fountain pen was manufactured in an industry. So in simple time, if you take things literally, if this fountain pen is manufactured in industry, so it tells you again what this thing called making fountain. It is also a use of water in industry because they use some chemicals to make that water to shoot up. And those chemicals, you learn them in high school when you reach there, God willing, if this corona pandemic ceases. The other use of water is washing coffee berries in coffee industry. Obvious coffee berries cannot be found in paper industry. They are found in coffee industries. When they are processing coffee, before they export it, it passes through different categories or processes. And when they are processes, processing it, you will find that they need to wash it. So they use water to wash everything in it. A point to note is that making fountain is industrial use of water. Again, I repeat, making fountain is industrial use of water. Now, examiners are very tricky. You will find a question they are asking, which one of the following is a recreational use of water? Choice A, they place their making fountain. Choice B, they place their watching fountain. So examiners are very tricky. So when they use the word watching, to watch is just to see. If you are seeing it, that one is recreational because you are seeing for enjoyment. So when you find that there are two choices there, they have placed their making fountain and then they have placed their watching fountain. Then no, watching fountain, we can categorize it as recreational use of water. But making fountain remains under industrial use of water. I believe I've elaborated that one. And I repeat, when the examiner tests you and asks you, which one of the following is a recreational use of water? Choice A, they place there making fountain. Choice B, they place there watching fountain. Remember when you look at dancing fountain, you can see even somebody kicking football and it is water creating that scenery. That scenario, it can attract many people. So you'll find that watching fountain, we can group it as recreational. But making fountain remains as industrial. In USA and Canada there, on the border, there is a fall known as the Niagara Fall. It is one of the major tourist attractions. So you'll find that even tourists go there to watch. That's why you'll find this word watch. We group it as recreational use of water. Okay? Let me now go to that recreational use of water. Recreational uses is where we use water for enjoyment. We just go there when you have got we know when you have leisure time. This one is for leisure purposes. Leisure time is anything that you do. Apart from your work, when you are very tired, you have done some work, now you are tired, you can go and enjoy yourself. So recreational uses of water is where water is used for enjoyment. And some activities done for enjoyment include some of these activities that we can do so that we can enjoy ourselves. One, we have got boat racing. And this one you just do for fun. You race for fun. So boat racing is a use of water for recreational or for enjoyment. Number two, we have got swimming. When you go to swim in a swimming pool, swimming is grouped as a use of water for enjoyment or for recreation. We have got sport fishing. Sport fishing is just fishing for fun. Fishing for fun, we group it as use of water, recreational use of water. And then we have got surfing. Surfing, mostly Europeans are the ones that practice it in oceans. Surfing is use of water for recreation to enjoy themselves. 
same to ice skating when there is winter season they skate on the ice and we know ice floats on water so when they skate on ice that one is just for recreational purposes we have got skiing skiing also is mainly done for enjoyment and then i added there the one i have elaborated watching fountains to watch the keyword there is watching back there earlier back when i was on industrial use of water making fountain the keyword is making to make to make is industrial when i come on this one to watch to watch you will find it is a use of water watching is a use of water in this thing called industry in this thing called recreational use okay i'm coming back there yeah here it is watching fountains and then the other thing there under uses of water for recreation i place there something called waterfalls waterfalls are also known as a water park and i have mentioned something called niagara fall this one there people just go there to enjoy themselves as they see the water as it falls down it turns to become ice so it attracts a lot of scenarios so people go there and see and view how this water how is it that it falls from a cliff and then when it reaches down it changes to become ice it freezes in kenya we have got the 14 falls the seven falls we have got the 14 falls many people come there they just watch it when they they come to view it that one is just a tourist attraction so you'll find tourism is we group it as recreational use of water so in class 4 those are the main areas that we learned about this thing called water and then the other thing the other segment there in standard four is transportation use of water or transport uses of water how this water can be used to transport goods water is used to transport goods remember earlier back i told you in class three there are some ways of transporting water now here water is now assisting us to transport goods so in standard four, we are learning about transport uses of water. So water is used to transport goods. The devices that uses water to transport goods are, one, we have ferries, two, we have ships, C, or three, we have boats. The next one, we have canoes. The third one, we have got steamers. And then we have got what we call yach. And then there's a thing I wrote there. Ships and ferries are mainly used to transport large cargoes. Again, I repeat. Ships and ferries are mainly used to transport large cargoes. You will find we have got a lot of containers at Mombasa port there. Because ships and ferries, they bring a lot of things that are ex imported from other countries so water is used to transport very heavy luggage apart from train water also it is there although it is slow in movement something like ship they are very slow to move but we'll find they transport very heavy loads okay and then i want to look at some of the areas in standard form just on this one class four or grade four how many questions are tested i told you previously there are four areas they test in kcp underwater one is uses of water mostly it is class four work downwards up to grade one the second part they test on waterborne diseases and waterborne diseases has never missed in any exam kcp exam number three there is this topic in class seven water pollution and the ways of conserving water because the government is discouraging us not to pollute water they don't mainly set on water pollution mainly they focus on ways of conserving water and you'll find a question must always come there and then in standard eight we learned about soft water and hard water and this one i'll come back and i'll tell you 
how this hard water, the differences between hard water and soft water, and how you can know this characteristic is for hard water, and this feature is for soft water. So here now, we are looking at this thing called the KCP questions. They, they tested from class 4 or grade 4 downwards. I have not yet come to waterborne diseases grade class 5. So in grade 4, last year, number 27, as I told you earlier, when I was beginning the lesson, last year they set four questions. The first question on water was number 24. The second question that was tested was number 25. The third question that was tested was number 26. And then the last question was number 27. And this number 27 was a class A, class 4 question or class 4 work. And majority of the learners here, they made a mistake. So when you made a question like this, I began earlier by mentioning there are many key areas. Uh, let me repeat for those who tuned in very late. There are many, there are many features that the examiners look at. I mentioned earlier, and I wrote something here, and I said, examiners test you on knowledge. Knowledge is those questions that are of low ability. And this one, I said, they test 17 questions. I again said, examiner, when he's testing you, he looked at comprehension questions, comprehensive skill. This is the skill that he looks at. Do you know how to comprehend? Comprehensive. Remember, in exam, you cannot do experiment. In primary level, we don't have practicals. So practicals, they mainly come in question form. This one, you'll find it mainly comes in class 8 work, that one for hard water and soft water. We have got another skill that examiners, they test. And I said, I mentioned earlier, it is what we call application skill. Application. You apply what you have learned or you apply what you know better. And I said application questions. Application questions, they have uh, around, they ask questions like uses. They ask questions like functions. They ask a question like purpose. Or some people say purpose, which is okay. And then you have got importance. And I said this topic for class four. Because these learners have not, they are growing up and they are maturing up. Mostly they ask uses or function or importance. Importance of water, function of water, uses of water. So you'll find that mostly they test learners here on class four work about application questions, uses. You apply the knowledge you have learned. Now then I said another one, we have got something called analysis. You analyze, analysis. This one mostly are a practical one, but they bring in question form, in sentence form. And then you have got synthesis question. Waterborne diseases, most, mostly they highlight the features, the following are signs and symptoms of a certain waterborne disease. And then they group them there, Roman 1, Roman 2, Roman 3. Synthesis questions are those questions that entail Roman numbers. And then you have got another thing called evaluation and evaluation i told you these ones are of high ability they bring around four questions in exam and these four questions they now differentiate last year the first candidate had 85 he was followed he was followed by a student who had 83 and then the rest 81 and below and you'll find those who got 80 and above were just a few so you'll find that if you want to be on a good site you must get everything, good side, get everything. And if you want to get everything, you need to be keen. You need to, to do what? To back up or improve on ways you are studying. Your studying skills need to improve. And you also need to know which tricks the examiners use so that they can do what? They can make you to pass or you can pass it or you can overcome what they asked you. So number 27 last year, they asked a question like this. Which of the following groups of activities only consist of industrial uses of water? A good learner, if you meet a question like this, which of the following groups of activities? It is an activity, I've unlearned the word activity, and they have written the word only. I circle the word only. And these activities you are looking at, it is just for 
industrial uses, uses of water in industry. Industrial uses of water. And then if you look at choice A, they said fishing, transport, mixing chemicals. Choice boy, they wrote washing vehicle, constructing roads, and then you have got mixing chemicals. Choice cat, they place their boat racing, swimming, fishing. Choice dog, we have got cooling machines, drinking, cleaning of tools. This question appears very simple. But unfortunately, if you look at the newsletter, although uh, the KCP newsletter, how the learners performed, you will find that majority of the learners failed number 27 because there is something called this thing called application and analysis. You did not analyze this question properly. So when you find a question like this, when you find a question like this one, one, you need to apply what we call elimination method. Two, you need to recall what you learned about uses of water in industry. You can write them down somewhere because that is your paper when you're doing the exam. You can write some of the uses of water you, 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 knew, you know or you learned so that you cannot make a mistake. In, and then the third thing, which many learners make a mistake, is assuming. Don't assume. This one, I know. Don't ignore anything. And mostly, you'll find that you'll always fall a very simple question because of ignorance. So you must be very keen and don't ignore any question that you are asked. So here, the, the best thing you do, you can use elimination method. One, they want industrial uses of water. We learned about uses of water for transportation. We learned about uses of water in industries, in the farm, at home. I can begin the letter A, choice A. Transport is one of the use of water. Where? For transportation. So because of this transportation, transport, and mixing chemicals, mixing chemicals again, we learned it is a use of water, okay, in industry and farm. But this one, you can leave it because it's both for farm and industry. But the main distractor here is transport. Fishing, we said sport fishing is industrial. But because of this transport, the main one, I eliminate choice A. I know this one cannot be the answer. I go to choice boy. Washing vehicle, I don't know where it is grouped. Construction, constructing roads, I don't know where it is. Mixing chemical, I know it is in the farm and industry. Because I'm left hanging or I'm left in a quagmire, I leave it there. I go to choice cut. Boat racing, we looked at it, it is a use of water. Where? In, in, for recreational purposes, for enjoyment. Swimming is for enjoyment. Fishing, for enjoyment. We don't know where it is. We leave it. But because of boat racing and swimming, it has eliminated because you are looking for industrial uses of water. So because of these two, we eliminate choice cut. This one cannot be the answer. We come to choice dog. We have got cooling machines. Cooling machines. This one we know it is industrial use of water. Drinking. This one here. This one here. Drinking is use of water at home don't over reason don't over reason say those people work in industries they again drink water yes they drink but this is science according to the syllabus drinking we group it or we categorize it as use of water at home so you'll find this drinking here it has eliminated everything on choice dog so we cannot even cleaning tools i leave it like that so because of this drinking here I have eliminated choice dog. So I, eliminate, I already eliminated choice A. It is not there. Choice cat, I eliminated. Choice dog, I eliminated. So the most appropriate answer, according to this one, is supposed to be choice boy. The use of, in, in, the use of water in industries. So the correct answer, KCP 2019 last year, number 27, was washing vehicle, because vehicles are made in the industry, Remember, they have not said washing utensils, it is vehicle. Constructing roads, there are industries or the companies that are hired to make those roads. Like in Kenya, mostly the people that get that tender, they're the Chinese 
and they make the roads. So that one is industrial use of water. And then mixing chemicals, it is industrial again. So the correct answer there was choice boy. The next question, we have got KCP 2014 number 11. They asked, in which one of the following activities is water used in industries? Again, they asked on industrial uses of water. So choice A, they placed their cleaning tools and equipment, preparation of soft drinks, washing cars, watering plants. So which one is activity is used for Nini? Which one of the following activities is water used in industries? You can see their preparation of soft drinks is there. Cleaning tools and equipment is for industry and remember it's for farm. Washing cars, this one is for industry. Watering plants in the farm. Cleaning tools and equipment, this one is both for farm and industry. Washing cars, we looked at the previous work, it was for industrial. But this question, because of this one, washing cars, Many learners went for it, but they marked choice boy, preparation for soft drink. That's why earlier I mentioned about it. So examiners, there are some ways they use to confuse learners, but if you use elimination method, you can come back to it. You cannot skip choice boy, you go to choice cut, because this one is almost correct. Now, because of time, in 2013, they said about the question about the uses of water for recreational, and this one, we are supposed to use elimination method. We have got transport, we have got cleaning, swimming. So the correct answer here, which, one, which of the following uses of water are recreational only? I believe the answer was choice cut. Swimming, fishing, boat racing, and then we have got the next one was 2012. They asked, asked again a question for class two. Which of the following is the correct procedure that is used to obtain clean water from muddy water? That's why I told you don't ignore a question from class two. So they asked a question there. Which of the following is the correct procedure that is used to obtain clean water from muddy water? So if you find this one here, this one here, muddy water, remember there's something called filtering. And the best one, remember, if it is for something, evaporation, you cannot remain with that water. This one is a method of separating mixture. So the correct answer there is you decant so that the, the dirt can settle down and then you filter to remove the layer that floats on water. So remember, you must float on water. So the correct answer was choice cut. So because of time, let me, because of time, time is not on my side, let me answer some questions that you have asked me. The first question is like this. I am Fiona from Nairobi. What is the meaning of pathogens? Good, that is a good question. I said in grade one, characteristics of water, pure water. Pure water does not have, is free from bacteria and pathogens. Pathogen is the same as bacteria. Number two. Number two, we have got, we have got something called, we have got something here, somebody has asked, is hard water best for drinking because of its nutrients? It is Clarice from, from Mambasa. Is hard water best for drinking because of its nutrients? It's Clarice from Mambasa. Yes, it is. In standard, in standard, in standard, in standard eight, you learned about soft water. And this soft water, this soft water, I mean, this soft water and hard water, we learned that the best water for, the best water for doing what? The best water for drinking is hard water because of the minerals. The best water for drinking is hard water because of the minerals it has. The next one, Mr. is a sugar frac, Mr. This one, okay, he did not write the message properly. Is a sugar franklin, 
Water covers how many percentage of earth surface? The percentage of earth surface mostly it is in class 7. When I'll come to this topic for class 7, I'll talk about it, but it is mainly found in the topic called environment. So environment we shall learn about it. Morning Morning, I'm Josephine. Which water source had the hardest water? The water source that has got the hardest water is the water from the borehole. We shall learn when I come back to talk about the sources of hard water for class 8 work. What is the other name? I have a, uh, somebody here called me, Morning, I'm Josephine. Okay, that one has answered. What is the name of that found on top of water? The dirt that is found on top of water, when I come back for class 8 work, you shall learn that that dirt, we call it scum. Scum is that dirt that is found on the water. And then you shall learn that there's also dirt that is found on the surface of the basin. When you have stored water in the basin, you'll find that it has, there's some dirt. When you touch the surface of that basin, it leaves some dirt on your hand. It has got also a name. So on top, it is scum. Scum of SCUM. Which gas dissolves in rainwater to form acid rain? We have two gases that dissolve in rainwater. One, we have sulfur dioxide. And two, we have got carbon dioxide. Again, I repeat, the gases that dissolve in rainwater to form acid rain, we have got sulfur dioxide. And two, we have got carbon dioxide. And you can realize both of them, they end with the word dioxide, dioxide. So it is sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide. Okay. Good morning, teacher. I am Helena. I have noticed that we have acaricides, pesticide, nematocide, ETC. Why do they use the word side? They use the word side because of the chemicals they use to make them. The manufacturing industry are the ones that use them. Remember, they are trying to differentiate between these ones and the detergents. We have got detergents, bleaching agents, and these ones, the pesticides, these ones here, the chemicals we use at home. I am Damaris. Is hard water best for brewing beer? Again, let me repeat the question. I am Damaris. Is hard water best for brewing beer? The answer is correct. The best water or the best type of water that is used in brewing industry is hard water. We shall learn it when I come to class 8. Morning teacher, which name is given to the dark gray coat that form in kettles after boiling hard water? We have got two. We have got far. The dirt is far. When it accumulates, we have got scales and far. Morning, okay, Eugene Juma from Transoya County. What is skiing? Skiing is a special event that they, they use something. Mostly, the, the Europeans are the ones that use it in oceans. Okay, the next one, what is hard water? Hard water here. Hard water, somebody is asking, what is hard water? Hard water is water that has got dissolved salts. Again, I repeat. Hard water is water that has dissolved minerals. Hard water is that water that has dissolving minerals. Eugene, and then I've got another one. Teacher, I'm Esther from Kitui. Does water, does water useful? Is water, I think he wanted to ask, she wanted to ask, does water useful? Is water useful in formation of blood? By how? Teacher, I'm Esther from Kitui. Does water, okay, I believe Esther wanted to ask, is water useful in formation of blood? Esther, your answer is yes. My answer is yes. Why? Because water, the liquid part of blood is plasma. Plasma is made majority using water. And remember in standard five, under importance of water in the diet, we said that water is used in formation of blood or making of blood. So it is true, water is used in making blood. 
Excess use of herbicides can lead to what in the soil? Excess use of herbicide, it can lead to what we call scorching effect. And the, when it br brings what you call scorching effect, scorching is burning the plants. And if, if you have got something called microorganisms living inside the soil, like small animals, living things that live in soil, what they do, they will suffocate and die. So anything that lives in the soil will die. And that soil will become acidic. So you'll find excess use of herbicide. And remember, this herbicide is a farm chemical. It leads to soil becoming acidic, hence killing any organism that lives in that soil. Okay, I believe I am through with the questions I have received right now. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned on K K T K U T V. And I welcome you back. I'll be back with the second segment to teach on waterborne diseases and other one. Thank you and have a blessed day.